darlings, welcome back to my channel. Are you a new subscriber? If you are, comment down below and let me know. So my story time video today is going to be about my recent experience with my first smear test. So basically a smear test is something you do as women and it basically tests your cervical area for any worrying signs of changes for um, cervical cancers or for warning signs about cervical cancers for the HPV virus. It's just generally something we need to do as ladies as we're getting older. Now I actually went for my cervical screening a little bit younger because I had been experiencing weird twinges and weird pains and when you're an anxiety sufferer like myself you just need to check these things out. Basically the changes start happening as soon as you start your period and if you're starting your period around the ages of 12 or 11, 12, 13, 14 then surely as you're growing as a woman from a teenagehood into young 20s you should be going and checking these things out. So I'm going to jump straight in and tell you my story because on this channel I like to help and inspire. So if you haven't yet, subscribe down below and I'm going to jump straight into the story. My smear test story was a bit of a bumpy one, it was a bit up and down so I can give you kind of the intricacies of it and it might actually help you guys if you're going through a similar experience. Okay so I'm going to start at the beginning of my story which is when I received a letter inviting me down to take a, my first smear test. I was always very excited to get down and do my smear test but secondly it is very daunting. The idea of going to your doctors and kind of letting them examine down there is really scary, very very scary, especially for me who suffers with anxiety. So it took a lot of build up going there, I had to really force myself to go there. I wasn't ever going to miss it, but I was thinking, hmm, can I physically do this? Can I go to the doctors and do this? This is a tip for you, if you're like me where you really build things up emo emotionally and internally and you really get anxious about things eat something sugary before, make sure you have drinking a lot, a lot of water because it does help. I was only going to see the nurse and the lady is lovely. She's so, so, so nice. She's really warming, really welcoming, very calm to be around and that really helps me. She knew what she was doing. She explained exactly what she was about to do and she explained that she does it all the time and not to worry. So then what they do is show you the apparatus they're going to use doing the test basically. So the device is um, how do I explain it without sounding rude? So there's basically a clear tube that's like this size and it's like, so it's that shape and it, she showed me the little, um, it's like a cotton wool bud um, for your ears that they kind of put inside you and take the swab. If you go in there cool, calm and collected and you just think it's a normal procedure, it's not really going to hurt then you'll be fine. But if you're like me and you really build it up, then it can become really stressful, but it's not a stressful experience. So she asked me to undress from the waist down and asked me to lie on the bed with a sheet, a paper sheet over me. And then I had, oh, sorry. Then I had to spread my legs and put them on the stirrups either side. It isn't a nice, come on, come on, it's not a nice scenario. You're not, you're not with your boyfriend, you're not with your girlfriend, you are in a doctor's surgery with your legs wide open to a complete stranger. Yeah, it's not nice, it is not nice. And then she kind of moved them back. Luckily I'm quite flexible. I had to have like my knees in the air. It's kind of like you're giving birth but without the baby. But there's a sheet covering you which makes you feel kind of better. You know like when you're younger and people are playing peekaboo and kids like genuinely think that you can't see them when they can't see you? There's a little element of that. So legs open, um, knees in the air. She put some um, gel on the device and so it can go where it needs to go and she put the gel on and then she explained what she's about to do and then she done it. Now at this point I was still feeling very sick, very nervous, very anxious. Because I was so anxious I'd really tight like closed up down there and I'm quite a petite person anyway and that does make it worse. It does make it worse when you are tense because your muscles just can't relax, you can't push it up far enough to see it did kind of hurt, it felt uncomfortable, I wasn't in pain, I felt very, very uncomfortable. And once it's up, the device, she has to uh, make it move apart because they have to see, they really have to see 
in there. And that's when things got really uncomfortable and actually it hurt me. Um, everyone is different. Remember, everyone's pain thresholds are different. Everyone's cervix is different. Just because it was hurting me does not mean it's going to hurt you. What I will tell you is I think no matter what, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's not a nice thing, but it wasn't a pain where you are, you need, you need it to stop, you know, it wasn't that kind of pain. It was bearable, but it just wasn't nice. So it, the pain, yeah, it went up when she opened that. She took her swab, which I felt, I must admit, I did feel it. It felt weird, it felt like a horrible sensation. I've never had anything that far up my body ever, so it was so weird. It was quick though, it was quick. She was so lovely, she was talking to me throughout the whole process. She took her swab, she put it in there, she carefully removed everything from me, and then obviously I put my legs back together, which was nice. So that part is over. The worst part, I think, of the whole thing was over there. Obviously there's a little bit of um, kind of leakage, if anything it's not really bodily fluids, it's like the gel is still coming out of you for a couple of hours so just be warned. But I felt fine after and um, I was so proud of myself, I literally was texting my friends, my family like I've done it. So I was so proud of myself and it was over in my mind, I thought I've done it, I'm very young. I'm very healthy, this is fine. That's the last I'll ever have to do of that test for at least a couple of years. Never really had troubles down there before. You know, they say if you have weird bleeding spots or if you have like pain after sex, things like that, then normally there's a problem down there. But actually I've never had any of that. So I thought I was going to be okay. The second letter. Now this second letter is giving me my results. And so the letter came, I opened it and unfortunately it wasn't great news. Now, um, it was very daunting to receive the letter and I was very frightened. The results weren't great. They weren't the worst, but they weren't great. So I will read out kind of a little bit of the letter. So, dear miss, so, oh. so, Thank you for coming for your cervical screening test. The laboratory found some slightly some slightly abnormal cells called borderline changes in your sample. The result does not mean you have cancer. A colposcopy referral has been arranged for me. This will take place in a hospital outpatient clinic. There's more information on the enclosed leaflet. For any questions or concerns, please call your GP. Otherwise, we will be in touch to tell you when you're cervical colposcopy appointment is due. I'm really proud that I can say the word colposcopy because when you see it on paper it's like really long and weird. I didn't get the best results. I had slightly borderline changes. This was not the letter I hoped to receive. So I, it was really scary. It was so daunting. Oh gosh, I remember that. In fact, I cried and cried. I cried all afternoon after receiving the letter. I think the problem is I don't think you're educated enough on cervical screenings and cervical problems, cervical cancers, cervical viruses. I don't think there is enough education on these things at school. So I just assumed the worst. Okay, that's when my anxiety gears really kicked up a level. It's not a nice thing knowing you have to go back and knowing you have to have a similar procedure to what the smear test was yet a little bit worse. And it's at a hospital. I think it's really daunting knowing that you have to go to the hospital now. You know, things have got a little bit more serious. Along came my hospital appointment. Now, the hospital appointment, I think it wasn't too long after the letter had come through. Luckily, I didn't have to stew for like weeks on end. I think I waited like a week. It was the following week and that's when my hospital appointment was. And they said I would be there for a couple of hours maybe. They said to bring a sanitary towel because the colposcopy is a little bit more um, intrusive inside and it could cause some bleeding. It's a hospital appointment so obviously everybody's a little bit more busy, everybody's a little bit more stressed and there's a lot of unwell people there. So I turn up for my hospital appointment and I have to fill out a form and it's like personal information basically. Fill the form out and then they call me into the 
uh, into the actual room where they do the test. So I go into the room and there's two ladies and one man. The man is going to be doing the colposcopy. He is a proper doctor and he knows what to look out for and what to do basically. And the two ladies were assistant nurses and they were going to help set everything up. They were trying to help calm me down, things like that. What I did notice about the colposcopy is they really quickly briefed me about what was going to happen. They didn't want to talk about it too much, I think purely because I was in panic mode. There was a computer screen and um, which you have to look at. Well, you don't have to, but he uses it to properly have a look inside you and there's like tools and everything. It was stressful. Again, it's how I perceived it though. You might be different. You might not get anxious about these types of scenarios. And if you do, just remember that one, they know exactly what they're doing. Two, they do it quite often. And three, it looks, it appears to be scarier than it actually is. They put me into the back of the room and the ladies were like hold, literally holding a towel up. And they were like, take your bottoms off, take everything off, wrap this sheet around you and come and lay on the bed. Just like you do with the smear test. Put your legs on the stirrups. We're going to bring them apart and your knees up in the air and have a look. And I think I was very stressed because it was a man doing it. I, I'm not, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't matter. A doctor is a doctor. They, they know it. But for some reason, I just didn't want to have my legs wide open to a stranger who is a man. I mean, it's hard enough with a woman, but at least a woman has the same private parts as myself. Whereas a man... Oh, I don't know, it just felt weird. The screen's here, right? So he, it's the same kind of device as it is for the smear test. They put it all, they get it all ready, put it inside you, open you up and get you ready. And this time he opened me up a little bit more than what the, the doctor's surgery did at the smear test. He's now looking inside. And with this one, they need to put a camera up inside you instead of kind of looking through. He said he, it all appears to be fine. There was nothing like drastically sticking out to him that he thinks doesn't look great. But what he did do and what he just said to me was I need to take a pinch to take a sample and send it off for proper testing just in case. Okay, it didn't hurt. It, I can't lie and say it, it hurt. It didn't hurt but it felt very, very uncomfortable and not nice. It felt not nice. I just did not enjoy that feeling and I really felt it. I really felt a tug inside, in my like, where my organs are. That's where I felt a tug. But it was like that, it was so quickly. And he said, that's it, that's all I have to do. He carefully removed everything and then I did have to lie there for like 15 minutes. I was, I was dizzy. They had to get me a couple of biscuits and some water. Although it didn't hurt initially, I did feel a definite something going on down there. Not long after, you know, they let me get changed and I obviously put some new underwear on. I put a sanitary product down and I kind of got myself ready to leave. And then as I was leaving, I was so dizzy. I was so, so dizzy. And then I sat down with them again and they said they had to take this sample because they have to send it off to the doctors and then the doctor tests it out for anything more serious. What I now need to do is go and make a further appointment in the waiting room for in a year's time, because no matter what, because this has all happened, I have to come back in a year's time. So they told me. I checked down there, there was a tiny bit of bleeding, but not much really. It was more like, um, it wasn't, you know, like you come to the end of your period, it's not really a proper period, it's just a bit of bleeding. That's how it kind of was shortly after the exam. And um, yeah, so I wasn't feeling great. I was feeling rough. And then I went straight home from there. I was feeling really rough and I could just kind of lay down on the sofa with my duvet, with some comfort food, you know, and just looked after myself, fell asleep for the rest of the afternoon and that was it. It wasn't, it wasn't awful, it just wasn't nice. If you have to go through the same thing, remember, all our services are different. I was quite stressed out in this situation and therefore I was tense down down there. I'm also uh, quite petite anyway, so it, it, it was difficult and painful for me in order for them to do anything to me. 
I think the worst bit about the whole situation was the fact that I had received a letter saying I needed to go to the colposcopy because it was scary. It was like really, really scary. Thought there was something drastically wrong with me. I'm waiting again and then I didn't receive a letter for two weeks and I wasn't really happy with this to be honest. And I know the NHS is stretch so i rang my local doctors and i said look i ha i went for a colposcopy obviously i'm very worried i don't want anything because at this point i still thought there was something wrong with me said to them i hadn't received my colposcopy results like do you know so they were able to tell me over the phone and she said over the phone you are absolutely fine Basically, as you're growing into a lady, you do change. Your cervix does change. I was going through a big hormonal change down there um, because I'd recently come off of the pill. So I think that didn't help the fact that my cells were changing. But regardless, it wasn't anything to worry too much about. It was just a little change in my cells that's completely normal. They'd sent me the letter not long after the phone call and in the letter it did say you won't need to come back this time next year because there, what, there isn't actually anything wrong with you. It was just a very normal change that young people go through. So that was it. And that was one of the best days ever. Receiving that phone call and then a couple of days later receiving it in writing that I'm absolutely fine. It was a completely normal um, cell change and that... You know, I don't need to come back the following year. I can wait another two years and just go for the normal procedure as you do at your surgery. It was just such a relief. What I do want to put out to you guys and anyone who's watching, it's so normal. Cell changes are really normal. And if you go for the smear test while going through a cell change, the likelihood is you will be called for a colposcopy. So don't think that there's something drastically wrong with you, make sure you are going because it's definitely never worth risking your health, especially when cancer's involved. If you get called for a colposcopy, you don't necessarily have cervical cancer. And I think people should be made more aware of that. I don't think enough people talk about going for a colposcopy and getting abnormal results. So that's why I wanted to kind of spread my story today and it's good it's a good ending like nothing was wrong with me guys if this video has helped you today or if it you think it will spread awareness to you or a family member or a friend please give it a share the more you share this video the more people might realize that it's all a normal thing i really feel like i get a lot of help from listening to other people's stories so that's why i want to help you guys with my story also don't forget to like the video because it honestly means the world to me and if you aren't already make sure you are subscribed and i will see you in my next video. Bye!